In the last five years, we've been trying to track the most common ailments that affect our registered children. And uh, last year, this analysis showed that there were three major clusters that is uh, comprised of 18 projects that were battling with Jika infestation. That's when uh, we decided we should uh, do a campaign because initially we've just been uh, dealing with the few cases that are reported at the project level. We felt that it was important for us to address this because it was a, a, a paramount need that had direct impact on whether or not we were able to achieve outcomes. Bearing in mind that we are living in a modern era, it was a bit shocking to find that uh, we are having jiggers uh, in our, amongst our registered children. And worse still is that uh, their families were affected too, and we could not be able to do much about them at that particular point. Coast Province is actually second from Central Province in uh, Jiga infestation. And uh, in Malindi, so far, we have registered 8,000 children who are Jiga infested. The total number that is affected in the three clusters, we were actually going out to reach 1,380. The approach is to do training, you know, just to train first the church that is inclusive of the child development workers and the church partner committee on the issues of Jiga uh, investigation. And the children? Yeah, very difficult. Through training, we are able to educate people on how to identify, how to treat them, and how also to prevent the Jiga uh, from, uh, uh, from occurring. Also, we are going to train them on how to be able to uh, keep proper and good hygiene. We started in 2007 working with jiggers in central Kenya. Slowly by slowly we came out to know that the problem is just not in central as we thought, but it is larger than central, it's in the whole of country, it's in the whole region, it's actually in Africa. There was need to partner with the hard Kenya, reason being I had Kenya are the experts in uh, anti jigger campaign and they have been very effective in carrying out such campaigns. We are using this method for painless and painless. First of all, in the three classes that we, we targeted, the causes for the high rate of infestation, the main cause is poor hygiene. People are lacking water and the issues of bathing, keeping their feet clean and even observing general personal hygiene. And number three is also lack of awareness, you know, education. The treatment of jiggers takes about two weeks, and it means that every day, two times a day, uh, somebody needs to soak their feet in the solution that is prescribed. This is potassium permanganate. It's a solution that uh, when you mix with the water and you soak the feet or whichever part of the body, for 15 minutes, you suffocate the fleas. Jiga infestation has quite uh, a number of effects. If you have heavy infestation, then you become anemic, you know. The blood level in the body is reduced. And that also, with anemia, you are also prone to many other infections. Like, for example, malnutrition. Without knowledge on, on management of Jiga infestation, some families could be using needles you know, to try and prick the body, to be able to remove the fleas. And as they prick, they cause wounds. These wounds can be infected. You can get illnesses even like tetanus. Because of the poverty, not everyone has their own needle, so they will share the needles. And if there is another infection, for example, like HIV AIDS, that is transmitted from one person to the other one. The other problem is it renders our children probably unable to, to walk because of the disfigured uh, toes and the, and the feet and they are not able to walk to school. And this causes school dropouts. It's a, a disease that people don't like to be associated with. And as these children are going to school with their feet, you know, going apart like this, what happens is the others love at them 
and they are not they, they lose that self esteem for the adults for example do are those who are uh, who have to go to work probably work in their farms and they have infestation it renders them so helpless they are not able to continue their daily life so they are not able to to earn any living i think those are very very uh, critical effects of giga infestation especially when the infection is quite heavy the reason why we have trained trainers is for those trainers to go and treat uh, the caregivers. They treat the guardian, the parents, the sisters, the brothers of those who are affected. So that there is continuity and there is easy uh, uh, mobilization of the communities. We have trained uh, 36 of them from 18 churches. So those are like our lead trainers. One thing that was really surprising about the Jigas we, were, we learned that the jigger can, can have up to 900 eggs. And you can imagine 900 eggs, what they can do to their community. It means if you have one jigger, you can infect other 900 people. Especially if the community around there is no hygiene, it means the whole community can suffer jiggers because one gives us 900 eggs. We've been able to network with even the local public health officers who are um, in charge of those particular regions. To have even the issues of hygiene improved, both in the schools where our children go, and even in the church and even in the community. So far, we can see that the, the outcome of the campaign is good because uh, the people who are trained already, they have already trained the family members of those who are infested and they are able now to start treating the people and they have been provided with the materials that are required. We endeavor to continue conducting the screening and target those who are affected, raise proposals, partner with those that we need to partner with in a bid to make sure that jiggers are eradicated amongst our registered beneficiaries. This campaign will mean uh, uh, we will be able to reach many people and we believe that by reaching them the, we can eradicate this problem, the, the jiggers problem. Our churches who are working with these members, if they can also have forums in church whereby they can discuss about these things, I believe many families will get this information and they will do something about jiggers. We will continue to intervene as the needs arise, but one of the major interventions that we are targeting that will have a long-term effect is that of uh, education and um, awareness creation so that there will be a total shift towards issues of um, behavior change, culture change, and we think that that is a long-term and more sustainable approach. My recommendation to Compassion is that let them continue doing the good work of supporting the community, and through this, I know God will do something great. We are so much grateful for the move they have taken to us because in a way they have helped the church in reaching this, com uh, this uh, community. With their support together, if we join together and continue together in working and reaching these people, then we shall, we shall help the community. What I can call on other, 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 other churches is to join in. Uh, get the example that has been set by Compassion so that many more people can come out as, 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 as much as they are going to get the spiritual food, they can also get healed out of jiggers.